Hi everybody, my name is Hunter Norgard and I am an FEA simulation specialist with Imagine Technologies and I'm here today to talk to you about simulation mechanical being used with Sim Studio tools to make some design changes while you're going through the process of setting up and running a simulation. In addition to that we're going to be going over a few other extra topics such as using plate or shell elements, how to import surfaces, and how to use line or beam elements. So we're going to start off with this platform framework which as you can see is actually a solid that's been imported into simulation mechanical. And we're going to start by reducing each one of these individual solid frame members down to a mid surface and then applying a plate or shell element. We can do so by going to the 3D mesh settings making sure that we have mid plane as a mesh type selected and meshing our model. Now typically for a situation like this we would want to use beam elements or another type of line element but because we care about the localized stress effects around the joints of our platform we're going to use these plate elements so that we can take a closer look at specific regions. And as you can see by using the mid plane mesh type we've actually transformed all of the individual solid members of this structure into surface parts with a plate mesh applied. Now all that's left for us to do is to complete the pre-processing by adding some loads and constraints. Now what I've done for this simulation is to represent a bolted connection at the bottom of each of our four posts. I've added an edge fixed constraint. And to represent a load, I've added some nodal forces to two of the horizontal frame members. Now viewing the results, I see that the displacement on each of those horizontal members that the load has been applied to is a little bit outside my comfort zone at 0.17 inches. And viewing the von Mises stress, I'm going to adjust the legend properties and set the top of the range to the yield strength of the steel I'm using. And that'll give me an idea of the localized stress effects on the joints and the midpoints of those horizontal members as well. Now based on the peak stresses I'm seeing in these critical regions, I see that the stresses are outside the tolerable range on this structure so it's time to go back to the FEA editor environment so that I can make some design changes. Now what I want to do here is actually see if I can make all my design changes initially within simulation mechanical. And if we fast forward a little bit, what I've done here is actually used the line command on the draw tab to just sketch in a couple of diagonal braces from about a quarter of the way down each of those front two posts up to about a quarter of the way in on that horizontal frame member. And now both of those lines were assigned to part number 9, which is a brand new part. We've assigned the beam element type. And we're going to edit the element definition, which will allow us to reference a cross-sectional library, choose a structural material type, such as rectangular tubing, and apply dimensions to it, which will then automatically generate section properties. Then, of course, all we have left to do is assign our material, run the analysis, and again we can view our results. Now viewing a new set of results it looks as if those beam elements have in fact reduced the stresses near the corner joints of our frame structure but it comes with a trade-off. It looks like we've actually got higher stresses about a quarter of the way down at the contact point on those vertical posts. So this doesn't seem like the right solution for me. Ultimately what I think we'll do is delete part number nine out of the simulation entirely and at this point I want to launch Sim Studio tools so I can make a true geometry change by creating a new gusset part. Now skipping forward a little bit, I've actually imported the frame structure into Sim Studio tools and I've already created a sketch profile of the gusset component that I want to generate in place. And to do so I actually used a lot of the same workflows that you're familiar with through Inventor. Number one is, was to create an offset plane from the front of the frame. Next was to create a new sketch on that offset plane. And once that sketch was in place, I traced out the profile using a lot of the same sketch commands that you're familiar with through Inventor. Now having completed my sketch, all I have left to do is to run the extrude command. Select the profile I've sketched out and set an extrude distance. And I want this extrusion to actually be split on either side of the sketch plane. Now one thing worth mentioning is that if you're using Sim Studio tools and creating an extrusion feature, 
you want to create a brand new component in place, make sure that you choose new component from the flyout menu so that that new body isn't added to an existing part. Now all that's left to do is to put some finishing touches on my gusset component. So I'm going to add a couple of fillet features on either inside corner on both sides of my gusset. And I will set a fillet radius of about four inches or so. Now the real power in Sim Studio tools is in its CAD preparation capabilities. In this case we are going to idealize our model by reducing all the solids down into mid-surface parts. And this will obviate our need to take these steps once we're in simulation mechanical. So selecting all the solids, I can just hit a button and transform them all into surface objects. Now having done this, all I have to do is go to the add-ins panel and launch this back into simulation mechanical. Now after re-importing this into Simulation Mechanical, besides the retina destroying color scheme that's been applied, I see that all of my solids have been transformed into surface parts. And if I check the 3D mesh settings, I can see that the system automatically wants to apply a plate shell mesh type because instead of a mid-plane mesh, which is applied to a solid, we're already importing surfaces, which will have the plate elements applied to them directly. Now having made a few tweaks to the element size and mesh matching tolerance, I'm ready to mesh my model. Now after generating the mesh, the rest of the pre-processing will be performed just like before, with the exception of, unlike before when we used a mid-plane mesh, now we have to give each of our parts an element definition which allows us to specify the thickness of the plate elements that we've applied. So under the thickness column I have to enter a value here, but I do have the freedom to give these shells any thickness value I want instead of having that value be automatically generated by the mid-plane mesher. Now with the thickness value assigned to all of my components, all I have left to do is assign the same boundary conditions I assigned in the first case. So I've added an edge constraint to the bottom of the posts and that nodal force to the midpoint on those two horizontal beams. Switching again to the results environment, I can see that the displacement values found are far lower than in the first case, with the displacements on that front beam just a fraction of what they were originally. Adjusting the legend to use the yield strength of our material as the top end of the range and switching to von Mises stress, I can see that the stresses in the joints and the midpoint of that beam are drastically reduced. So this is how we can make design changes on the fly, both within Simulation Mechanical and in SimStudio Tools. I want to thank you all for joining me, and I'll see you guys for the next one.